Hey everybody, it's Jared with Second Life Design. I'm um, getting a lot of questions on my Instagram and from YouTube on how to get started chainsaw milling, what it takes to get started, um, what's needed, and I want to do a quick vlog style video covering kind of some of the hardware and some of the other kind of unexpected things that kind of get wrapped up within the world of making your own slabs. Uh, starting with the hardware, there's three main components. There is the power head, the bar, and the mill. Uh, they all kind of work together, they're all kind of matched somewhat accordingly to each other and there's some flexibility within each one but they're all they all work together in conjunction and they're all matched pretty well comparably to size. Um, starting with the power head, um, if you have kind of a homeowner type saw, if it's a 40cc, 30cc, uh, you know home light, pooling, you know that kind of thing, uh, the homeowner saw for cutting up limbs, it's probably not going to be the best option for milling. Um, it just doesn't have the power. They aren't made for it. They're made for kind of short use, uh, short term use. They aren't made for the sustained duration of milling. Um, I, personally, I wouldn't go with anything less than a 50 cc saw. Um, that's going to be on the on the bottom end of what I would probably use. Um, if you were doing anywhere from 10 inch up to 16 or 18 inches, that'd be about the max I would go with one of the saw that size. Um, I run a steel 661, it's close, it's a um, 94 cc's, so it's kind of on the higher end of that spectrum, and it works very well for what I need, but I understand those are very expensive as well. So you have to kind of find your balance of your what your expectations are versus what you can afford. Uh, moving on to the bar, um, those are going to be generally replaced as well. You're going to go longer than what you think. Uh, most people, a 16 or 18 inch uh, bar is really more than enough when you're milling. It's not. You want to get as wide as you possibly can because inevitably you will find bigger logs than what you think you will. Um, when I started, I had a 42 inch bar. That's what I bought. That was my big bar. That was going to last me a long time and that was as big as I'd ever need. And I quickly outgrew that after about three logs. Uh, it does not take long to get bigger than what you think. Um, it's like having an RV or a boat where every year you want to get two feet longer. This is the same thing with logs. You will always find something bigger you can mill that you'll want to have in your stash. Um, as far as the mills, they are matched to the bars as far as length. They are, they come in different length. It's generally it's the rails that are just longer or shorter depending on that. Um, they get matched to what size you need. Uh, they are adjustable generally so you can match to different sizes and they're all kind of independent on that. Granberg is the big manufacturer of them. Really nice product. I've seen them. I've never used one myself. Uh, they're all aluminum. They're really rigid, really strong. Um, I have a Panther Pros mill. It's steel, uh, made in the USA, a uh, small family company. Uh, I went, went that route to support them a little bit more. Um, you know, you kind of pick your choice, you know, your choice on that thing. Um, things that people don't think about. Uh, the space, how much slabs take, how much space they take up. Um, anyone's been to your local wood shop or wood lumber yard, you see how much how large those places are because you, you know if you have an eight foot slab that's 20 inches wide, that takes that's a lot of space tied up uh, for however long. Um, you need a lot of space for these things for them to dry. Uh, behind my shop, I have a 24 by 16 uh, mulch area that I have a half dozen logs air drying now. I can't use that for anything else. I can't uh, put a shed there. I can't do anything else with it. It is strictly for logs right now. It's going to be like that for the next two years until all these are dry. And there will probably be more after that going into that space. So space is a big consideration. People don't think about that when they're getting started and they really need to. It's something that um, you're inevitably, you're going to want to get a lot of slabs. You're going to want to get more. It becomes kind of a kind of a, a hobby and an addiction and you wanted to get more and more and more and you need a lot of space to hold all them. That's just kind of the way it is. I've run out of space now. You get creative and figure it out. Um, last thing people don't think about is time. Uh, how long these things take to air dry. I air dry all my slabs. I don't like handling them twice. Um, the kiln, uh, kiln operators around here charge 30, 35 cents a board foot to dry them. So the, the idea of moving them two or three times and paying a lot to get them dried is not enough for me to just, I'll, I'm a little more patient, I can wait to air dry them. Um, typical drying time, you're looking at at least a year, year and a half of air drying outside. 
Uh, I try and get things inside after that for another three, four, five, six months of air drying inside. So this is not a quick process. This is not something you're going to start out in the summer and then use this stuff in the fall. It takes a while. Um, you got to be patient. Um, air drying, I, I have really good results with air drying. I don't get a ton of warpage. Um, I've heard stories of people going to kilns and, you know, the kiln operator wants to turn over their space as quick as possible. So they get a little, they start rushing it. And next thing you know, they have a bunch of unusable lumber. It's all twisted up. So air drying is a little bit slower, but it's a little bit safer for me. Um, drying lumber is a whole different category. So I won't go down that road too much. Um, I'm going to do a couple other videos, probably try and get these up tonight on um, why I started milling, what got me into it, and maybe those that'll help you guys in deciding what your needs are, why you want to get into it, and if that helps you out, that's what I'm doing these for. Um, please follow me on Instagram, Second Life Design. Um, any comments, likes, com uh, subscriptions, uh, leave them here for YouTube, and I'll get back to you as quick as possible. Any other videos you want to see? Uh, please let me know. I'm working on doing a top cut video. Everyone's really interested in how you make the first cut. I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to get a good log lined up. I should have one coming up here next week. So uh, hopefully I can get a good video on that so everybody can see how you make the top cut. Um, that's all I got right now, guys. Any questions, let me know. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe. I appreciate it.